Welcome back to the course of chemical crystallography. In the previous lecture, we have learnt about the Friedel's law can be derived from the expression of structure factor using vector space diagram. So, from here, we would like to continue and we would like to now derive the expression for structure factor with electron density. This is what is our motto for today's lecture. So, what we want to do is we want to represent, we want to derive an expression which will relate F H K L in terms of rho x y z which means we want to establish the relationship between the structure factor with the atoms that are present at various positions in the unit cell. Here we know the electron density rho is nothing but number of electrons present per unit volume. So, suppose we have an atom located at x, y, z. We have an atom at x, y, z. So, the electron density associated with that atom can be written as rho x, y, z and if the volume element involved to accommodate that atom at x, y, z is dv. So, the electron density associated with that atom is rho x, y, z dv. So, in exponential form, this density can be written as rho x, y, z e to the power 2 pi i h x plus k y plus l z dv. So, now we have a large number of such atoms located at various sites in the unit cell. So, when we want to add the contribution of all such atoms and then relate it to the corresponding structure factor, then for scattering from all those electron density sites that is all the sites located at various x, y, z. So, having the volume element dv, we can write the expression for structure factor as f h k l equal to sum over v rho x y z e to the power 2 pi i h x plus k y plus l z dv. Let us write this equation as equation number 1. We will need to refer to this equation in future in the, in the next part of this lecture. So, let us try to now understand what is 1D. Let us now try to understand what is one dimensional Fourier series because we will need these mathematical tools to understand the relationship between structure factor and electron density. So, a one dimensional Fourier series can be written as f x equal to a 0 plus a 1 cos 2 pi x plus a 2 cos 2 pi 2 x plus the sign terms. So, this should go up to a n cos 2 pi n x 
and then we add the corresponding sine terms which are b1 sine 2 pi x plus b2 sine 2 pi 2x plus up to bn sine 2 pi nx it is in one dimension so in a simplified manner one can write it as a0 plus sum over n equal to 1 to n a n cos 2 pi n x plus b n sin 2 pi n x. So, we write this equation as equation number 2. So, now we, we know that cos x is equal to half e to the power i x plus e to the power minus i x and sin x equal to minus i by 2 e to the power i x minus e to the power minus i x. So, now if we try to rewrite the expression for f x in terms of sin and cos terms because we, it is already written in cos and sin terms and when we will represent them using these exponential factors. So, f x will become equal to a 0 plus half is taken out it is equal to a 1 e to the power 2 pi i x plus a 1 e to the power minus 2 pi i x plus a 2 e to the power 2 pi i 2 x plus a 2 e to the power 2 pi i minus 2 x sorry minus 2 pi i e to the power 2 pi i 2 x and so on this corresponds to the a terms plus the b terms which will have the minus i by 2 b1 e to the power 2 pi i x plus b1 psi minus b1 e to the power minus 2 pi i x plus b2 e to the power 2 pi i 2 x minus b 2 e to the power 2 minus e to the power minus 2 pi i 2 x and so on up to the n. So, when we try to do the sum of these we can see that there are common factors which can be taken out and rewritten. So, what we try to take out is the terms with e to the power 2 i x at one place, e to the power minus 2 i x at another place and so on. So, in the next page we will rewrite this expression for f x. We will rewrite this expression for f x equal to a 0 plus half a 1 minus b 1 a 1 minus i b 1 e to the power 
टू पाई आई एक्स प्लस ए टू माइनस आई बी टू ए टू दी पावर टू पाई आई टू टू एक्स प्लस सो ऑन प्लस हाफ ए वन प्लस आई बी वन इ टू दी पावर माइनस टू पाई आई एक्स प्लस ए टू प्लस आई बी टू इ टू दी पावर माइनस टू पाई आई टू एक्स एंड सो ऑन अप टू दी एन एस टर्म सो दिस एक्सप्रेशन कैन फर्दर बी सिंप्लीफाइड एज ए जीरो प्लस दिस एक्सप्रेशन कैन बी फर्दर सिंप्लीफाइड एज एच इक्वल टू माइनस एन टू प्लस एन सी एच इ टू दी पावर टू पाई आई एच एक्स वी राइट इट एज एक्सप्रेशन नंबर थ्री वेर C0 जीरो इज इक्वल टू ए जीरो एंड सी एच इज इक्वल टू हाफ ए एच माइनस आई बी एच एंड सी माइनस एच इक्वल टू हाफ ए एच प्लस आई बी एच so one can write the same as fx equal to sum over h equal to minus n to plus n ch cos 2 pi hx plus i sin 2 pi hx so this is the expression for a one dimensional one dimensional fourier series in along x axis say so what we know is that the electron density which is rho x y z is a three dimensional periodic function for crystals so the overall rho x y z can be represented as a sum of this fourier series in three dimensions with h prime k prime sum over l prime C H prime K prime L prime e to the power two pi i H prime x plus K prime y plus L prime z. So this is the expression number five. These values of H prime k prime and l prime can be from anything from minus infinity to plus infinity because there are infinite number of planes that one can consider within an unit cell so what one can write in that case for f h k l is nothing but sum over v triple sum over h prime k prime and l prime ch prime k prime l prime 
e to the power 2 pi i h prime x plus k prime y plus l prime z into e to the power 2 pi i h x plus k y plus l z dv which is my equation number No, we don't write any number for this. This equation comes from from the equation number one. Because if you see the equation number one, we have rho x y z. This rho x y z is now represented in expression number 5 and now rho x y z is placed in case of equation number 1 and we can write f h k l equal to the triple sum over h prime k prime l prime c h prime k prime l prime e to the power 2 pi i h prime x k prime y l prime z and so on. So, we can write this as sum over v h prime sum over k prime sum over l prime c h prime k prime l prime e to the power 2 pi i h plus h prime x plus k plus k prime y plus L plus L prime Z dV. So, if this is a periodic function, so the exponential function is a periodic function here and what happens is when we do the integration over a period, then it is 0 for all the terms. The integral over a period of an exponential function is 0 for all the terms except for the terms where h prime equal to minus h, k prime equal to k prime equal to minus k and l prime equal to minus l. So, what happens when we arrive at those two situations? In, in a situation when it is h prime equal to minus h, k prime equal to minus k and l prime equal to minus l, we can, we should, we can write f h k l is equal to sum over v c h bar k bar l bar dv which is equal to v into c h bar k bar l bar. So, this is the expression number 6. So, one can write the constant c h prime k h bar k bar l bar as equal to 1 by v f h k l we write it as equation number 7. So, now we substitute this equation number 7 to equation number 5. What is equation number 5? The equation number Now we substitute, now we substitute this express value for c h bar k bar l bar to the equation number 5 and rewrite the expression for rho. So, what is rho x y z? It is equal to 1 by v triple sum over h 
K and L F H K L e to the power minus 2 pi i H X plus K Y plus L Z which is the equation number 8. So now if you try to compare this equation number 8 with the equation number 1 that we wrote. So I am again rewriting that F H K L is equal to sum over V rho X Y Z e to the power 2 pi i H X plus K Y plus Lz dv. So, this was my equation number 1. What do we see here in these two very important expressions? In case of equation number 1, we are expressing structure factor as a Fourier transformation of rho x y z. So, here the structure factor is expressed as a three dimensional Fourier transformation of rho x y z which is a periodic function in three dimension but in the equation 8, we see the reverse. Here, the rho is expressed in terms of FHK. What does it mean? Here, the density, that is the electron density, is expressed as a Fourier transformation of structure factor FHK. So, what does it mean if we have a set of structure factors? If we do a Fourier transform of structure factor, we get to know the electron density at various places. And if we do the reverse, we take the electron density and do a Fourier transformation, we get to know the structure factors. So, this Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transforms are is done every now and then when we try to refine and compare the structure and the modified structure along with the model which we will discuss in future. So, <clears throat> in this lecture we have learned till now how one can express the structure factor F H K L in terms of rho H K L and how one can represent rho H K L in terms of F H K L. So, now let us extend our understanding of structure factor using the exponential form. So, today now we would like to learn the structure factor expression in exponential form. So, once again for our use we need to know a few mathematical expressions, we need to know the expressions for e to the power x which is 1 plus x plus 
x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus x to the power 4 by 4 factorial and so on is now the equation number 1. We write cos x equal to 1 minus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube x to the power 4 by 4 factorial minus x to the power 6 by 6 factorial and so on. We write it as expression number 2. And then we write sin x equal to x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x to the power 4 by 4 factorial sorry plus x to the power 5 by 5 factorial minus x to the power 7 by 7 factorial and so on as equation number 3. Now if we substitute x by i delta and multiply both sides of equation 1 by f we can write f e to the power i delta is equal to f into 1 plus i delta minus delta square by 2 factorial minus i delta cube by 3 factorial plus delta to the power 4, 4 factorial and so on. So one can write this f e to the power i delta equal to f 1 minus delta square by 2 factorial plus delta to the power 4, 4 factorial minus and so on plus take i out delta minus delta cube by 3 factorial plus delta to the power 5 by 5 factorial and so on. So this can now be written as f cos delta plus i sin delta. So now this is nothing but a complex number in polar form. So this complex number has an amplitude of f and phase angle delta. So we can write the structure factor f is equal to sum over j f j e to the power i delta j where f j is the scattering factor of 
jth element and delta j is equal to the phase of the atom with scattering factor Fj with respect to the origin. So, this is the phase of that diffracted beam because of that Fj. So, now we can write if the structure factor Fhkl as equal to sum over j Fj e to the power 2 pi i hx j plus k y j plus l z j as the phase delta is nothing but 2 pi hx plus k y plus l z and here since we are doing the sum over all possible x, y and z the subscript j's have come in. So, this is the expression for structure factor which we have already seen in our previous lectures how this is represented in terms of the exponential form. So, in today's lecture we have learnt how to represent the structure factor using the exponential form, using the polar form and so on. And then we have learned how to correlate the structure factor with the electron density. So, what we now know is the structure factor is the Fourier transform of electron density and electron density is a Fourier transform of structure factor. So, in the next class we will learn about special structure factor expressions and then we will try to derive the systematic absence conditions.